We're going to focus on how we can use language in our interactions with customers to get them to have these powerful, motivating beliefs. Now, let's face it, you know, language, something we use in our marketing and sales all the time. But I think what we'll see is that most of the ways we use language in sales and marketing isn't really that effective. Think of this. The average American is bombarded with 5,000 marketing and sales messages in every 24-hour period. Think about that. So the last 24 hours, you've been seeing banner ads, and maybe if you watch TV, there's some commercials, if you read a magazine, et cetera. Of those 5,000 messages you were exposed to yesterday, how many do you remember? How many motivated you to buy something? Let's sort of rethink the way we use language with our marketing and our sales efforts. You know, language is a really magical thing that really distinguishes us as a species, doesn't it? I mean, other animals use sounds to communicate. Dogs bark. There are these monkeys called vervet monkeys who have a bunch of different calls, and one might mean, oh, there's an eagle up in the tree, or another call might mean there's an animal on the ground. But basically, those are just sort of broad gestures, really indefinite gestures, compared to the nuance, the articulation, the specificity, I'd say even the magic of human communication. Think about this. You've got a friend. You can just say a couple of words to this friend, a couple of sentences to this friend, and like magic, just after you saying a handful of words, he's going to show up at a restaurant you chose a week from tomorrow at exactly 12.15. Think how magical that is. Think all the times you can say something and somebody decides to do a listing with you, or a buyer decides to buy a house. Sure, there's other factors, but the way we use language is something that really distinguishes us as human beings. So let's look into the history of human language for some insights on how we can help customers form these commitment-driving beliefs. Humans invented writing about 5,000 years ago. Think about what a major breakthrough that was. We could all of a sudden write things down, or actually back then I think you'd have like a scribe chisel it into a stone, but the idea was an idea could be recorded and transported to another place or another time and be read back. Pretty magical, and of course we use that all the time now. That was 5,000 years ago. But humans invented fully formed language 100,000 years ago. By 100,000 years ago, humans had language that is as robust and as strong and powerful as we have now. So think about that. 5,000 years ago, we invented writing. 100,000 years ago, we had evolved fully formed language. That means 95% of the time we've had language, we haven't been able to write things down. But during that time period from 100,000 years ago, humans had lots of cumulative progress, didn't we? We invented cultures and technologies, led to civilization and agriculture, which came like more than 10,000 years ago before we had writing. So how did we do it? How do we have this cumulative progress when we couldn't write things down? How did, as a group, did we remember things to create cultural memory and progress? We used stories. We created our narratives, <coughs> myths, legends, folklore, that help us create ideas that were enduring, that could be transported to another place or another time down through generations. We are so wired for stories. It's really how we think and believe. You know, life's pretty distracting. It's sometimes hard to pay attention to one thing for a minute, isn't it? When was the last time you were undistracted paying attention to one thing for a hundred minutes? I'll bet it's when you were watching a movie because the story captivated you. We are completely wired for stories and so are our customers. We have this tendency to think that if we just show a bunch of bullet points to a customer or explain something and some facts, no matter what kind of personality they have, they're going to get it. And sure, some people embrace facts more, but all those bullet points, all those proof points really only resonate with the customer and motivate them if it fulfills the narrative they've got in their mind. Seven billion of us on the planet, we're all walking around with this personal narrative, the story of our life in our mind, aren't we? You went to bed last night with the story of your life and what's going on, and you woke up this morning and it picked up. We all have that going on. And so what we want to do is help our customers form stories in their minds that involve us, 
that help them see why we are the perfect partner to guide them in going from the challenges they have to the transformations they want. That we are the perfect partner. We want to play a role in their story. Now let's think about this. Because most of the time when we talk about stories in marketing and sales, it's not an entirely new concept. But usually what people think of that as is, let me tell you my story. Let me be a good salesperson to explain the story to you. Or let me have my website. Click that About Us page and you're going to see my story. Well, I have some tough news for all of us here. I hate to share, I hate to share this. Anybody, anybody faint easily? If you do, take a dri sip of water because I've got some really tough news to share. Okay? Your customers don't really care about your story. Who do your customers care about more, you or themselves? themselves? Of course, they care about themselves. No matter how much they love you, they love themselves more. <laughs> no doubt about it. So therefore, when we think about the story we want our customers to have in their minds, it's not your story, it's their story in which you play the role of best supporting actor in helping them achieve the transformation they want. It's not your story, it's theirs. You are not the hero of this story. In this story, you want your customers to believe you're not the hero. You know, think of it this way. You're not Luke Skywalker, you're Yoda. You're the guide, the perfect partner to help your customer achieve what they want. I mentioned a moment ago that all seven billion of us on the planet, we have that, that narrative going on in our mind, don't we? We all do. So think about it. Here's your customer with this life narrative they're living with all day long, their story of their life. And here's your story out here. Do you want them to try to jump out of their mind and embrace your story and go, wow, that's really hard for them to do. They're living in this story all day long. How about instead of making them jump out of their personal narrative and embrace your story, we figure out how to bring your story into their mind. We get them to a point where when they think about what they're trying to accomplish, they can't imagine doing it without you because we've woven the stories together. We've created a shared story inside their mind.